Welcome back, rich followers. In the early 2000s, a hedge fund by the name of Amaranth Advisors was on the rise. Founded in 2000 by Nicholas Maunis, this Connecticut-based firm focused on multi-strategy investments with a particular emphasis on the energy markets. With a team of bright and talented individuals, Amaranth quickly gained a reputation as one of the industry's most successful and respected hedge funds. By 2006, the fund had amassed a whopping $9 billion in assets under management. But behind this incredible success, story was a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. A key figure in Amaranth's rise to fame was Brian Hunter, a young and ambitious energy trader who joined the firm in 2004 with a background in physics and a penchant for taking risks. Hunter quickly made a name for himself in the world of energy trading. His aggressive strategies and bold bets on natural gas prices propelled Amaranth to the forefront of the industry, raking in massive profits and earning him a place among the most influential traders of his time. As Amaranth continued to expand its footprint in the energy markets, Hunter's bets grew larger and more audacious. By 2006, he was responsible for managing more than half of the fund's total assets. In fact, his bets on natural gas were so significant that they accounted for five of the entire market at the time. But as we all know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, and Amaranth's fall was nothing short of spectacular. Part 2. Brian Hunter's Aggressive Natural Gas Trading Strategy and Outsize Bets Hunter's trading strategy was based on exploiting fluctuations in natural gas prices by taking long and short positions on natural gas futures. He believed that he could predict the direction of natural gas prices based on historical patterns, weather forecasts, and market fundamentals. This confidence in his ability to predict price movements led him to take outsized bets on natural gas, which at the time seemed to be paying off handsomely. However, there were warning signs that Hunter's strategy was far from foolproof. As early as 2005, he had already experienced a significant loss of $1 billion when his bets on natural gas prices went awry. Yet this setback did little to deter Hunter, who quickly recovered and continued to take on even larger positions in the natural gas market. This high-stakes approach to trading was a double-edged sword for Amaranth. While it generated significant profits when Hunter's bets paid off, it also exposed the fund to considerable risk. By 2006, the sheer scale of Hunter's positions in natural gas had reached a tipping point and it wouldn't take much for things to go horribly wrong. Part 3. Amaranth's Initial Success in the Natural Gas Market and Massive Profits Amaranth Advisors initially experienced tremendous success in the natural gas market thanks to the keen trading strategies and risk-taking approach of one of its star traders, Brian Hunter. Hunter had a background in the energy sector and had honed his skills trading natural gas futures and options eventually becoming one of the most influential traders in the market. Hunter's trading strategies involved taking large leverage bets on the future prices of natural gas, particularly focusing on the spread between summer and winter prices. His belief was that the prices would increase due to a combination of factors, including weather patterns, supply constraints, and growing demand for energy. In the years leading up to 2006, his bullish bets on natural gas paid off handsomely and Amaranth's profit soared. Amaranth's initial success in the natural gas market was nothing short of astonishing. Between 2002 and 2005, the fund's assets under management ballooned from $600 million to over $9 billion, with the majority of these gains attributed to Hunter's natural gas trading. In 2005 alone, Amaranth's bets on natural gas delivered a return of around 32%, an impressive feat considering the broader hedge fund industry's average return of roughly 9% that year. As the fund's profits soared, so too did the confidence of its management and investors. Hunter was hailed as a trading genius, and Amaranth became synonymous with success in the world of hedge funds. The massive profits generated by the fund's natural gas trades enabled it to expand its operations and attract even more investor capital. However, this initial success would ultimately prove to be Amaranth's undoing. The very factors that had contributed to the fund's meteoric rise, Hunter's aggressive trading strategies, the outsized bets on natural gas and the heavy reliance on leverage, would eventually set the stage for its catastrophic collapse. As we've seen in the previous sections, 
The dramatic reversal of fortunes in the natural gas market in 2006 caught Amaranth completely off guard, leading to the loss of billions of dollars and the eventual implosion of the once high-flying hedge fund. Part 4. The Sudden and Disastrous Collapse of Amaranth's Natural Gas Positions in 2006 In the summer of 2006, Brian Hunter's natural gas bets seemed to be paying off, with Amaranth advisors reaping substantial gains. But as the saying goes, what goes up must come down, and Amaranth's fortunes were about to take a sharp and disastrous turn. As the summer wore on, natural gas prices began to stabilize, and some market observers predicted that the coming winter would not be as cold as initially anticipated. These factors, coupled with other market dynamics, led to a decline in natural gas prices. With Amaranth heavily invested in long positions, anticipating that prices would continue to rise, the fund found itself in an increasingly precarious situation. The first signs of trouble appeared in early September 2006, when Amaranth began to suffer significant losses on its natural gas trades. At the time, the fund's management attempted to downplay the situation, assuring investors that the losses were temporary and that the overall strategy remained sound. However, the situation rapidly deteriorated as natural gas prices continued to plummet. By mid-September, Amaranth's losses ballooned to an astonishing $6 billion. The fund's management finally admitted the gravity of the situation, but by then, it was too late. The rapid decline in natural gas prices had caught Amaranth completely off guard, and the fund's risk management measures proved woefully inadequate to cope with the scale of the losses. As Amaranth's losses mounted, other market participants began to sense the fund's vulnerability and started aggressively shorting natural gas, further driving down prices and exacerbating Amaranth's losses. The market had turned against Amaranth, and there was little the fund could do to stop the bleeding. Faced with a crisis of unprecedented proportions, Amaranth scrambled to offload its natural gas positions to other firms in an effort to salvage what was left of the fund. However, the sheer size of Amaranth's positions and the rapidly deteriorating market conditions made it nearly impossible to find buyers willing to take on the risk. As the days wore on, Amaranth's management was forced to confront the grim reality. The fund was on the brink of collapse. A $6 billion loss represented nearly 70% of Amaranth's total assets under management, and there was no feasible way for the fund to recover. Amaranth's swift and catastrophic collapse serves as a stark reminder of the potential dangers lurking in the financial markets. In a matter of weeks, the once high-flying hedge fund found itself brought to its knees by a disastrous bet that went horribly wrong. The story of Amaranth Advisors' nightmare underscores the importance of effective risk management, the perils of overconfidence, and the need for diversification in any investment strategy. Part 5 – The Aftermath of Amaranth's Collapse and the lessons learned for investors and regulators. Amaranth's downfall sent shockwaves throughout the financial industry, prompting calls for increased regulation and oversight of hedge funds. In the wake of the collapse, both the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission launched investigations into the fund's activities, which ultimately led to increased scrutiny and tighter regulations for hedge funds and energy trading. The Amaranth Saga also underscored the importance of risk management, not only for hedge funds, but for all investors. Many investors have been blinded by the allure of high returns without fully understanding the risks they were taking. The collapse served as a harsh reminder that greater returns often come with greater risks, and that it is essential to strike a balance between the two. Moreover, Amaranth's downfall highlighted the dangers of relying too heavily on a single individual or strategy. By entrusting a significant portion of its assets to Hunter and his natural gas bets, the fund had essentially put all its eggs in one basket, leaving itself dangerously exposed when things went south. So what can we learn from Amaranth's trading loss and how can we apply it to our life? 1. Amaranth's collapse serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of proper risk management. To apply this lesson to other businesses or personal endeavors, always evaluate the potential risks associated with a decision or investment and take appropriate steps to mitigate those risks. 2. Relying too heavily on a single individual or strategy can be a recipe for disaster, as demonstrated by Amaranth's over-dependence 
on Brian Hunter's natural gas bets to avoid similar pitfalls, ensure that your investments, business strategies or life plans are well diversified and not overly reliant on a single factor. 3. Amaranth's investors were attracted by the promise of high returns without fully grasping the risks involved. Before investing in any venture or making significant decisions, always take the time to understand and weigh the potential risks against the potential rewards. This approach can help you make more informed choices and avoid costly mistakes. Now, I'd like to ask you, my dear viewers, how do you think the management at Amaranth could have better mitigated the risks associated with Hunter's aggressive trading strategies? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.